the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning to you all, and welcome to our Mass this morning, and thank you for taking the trouble to come on such a wet and wintry morning. We continue on our Advent journey as we get nearer and nearer to the great festival of Christmas. And we pray that we will be open to the presence of the Lord at this time, where he supports us and helps us. And we find in our readings today an account of uh, two instances of the birth of a child, the child, one of the child, Samson, and the other, John the Baptist. And so we are reminded of the, the birth, the birth of the Lord, which we will celebrate uh, in a few days' time. As we gather for our Mass this morning, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins so that we may prepare for the celebration of these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the childbearing of the Holy Virgin graciously revealed the radiance of your glory to the world, grant, we pray, that we may venerate with integrity of faith the mystery of so wondrous an incarnation and always celebrate it with due reverence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our readings. <clears throat> a reading from the Book of Judges. There was a man of Zora of the tribe of Dan called Manoah. His wife was barren. She had borne no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to this woman and said to her, You are barren and have, no, and have had no child, but from now on take great care. Take no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean, for you will conceive and bear a son. No razor is to touch his head, nor for the boy shall be God's Nazarite from his mother's womb. It is he who will begin to rescue Israel from the power of the Philistines. There the woman went and told her husband, A man of God has just come to me. His presence was like the presence of an angel of God. He was so majestic. And I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not reveal his name to me. But he said to me, You will conceive and bear a son. From now on, take no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for the boy shall be God's Nazarite from his mother's womb to his dying day. The woman gave birth to a son and called him Samson. The child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move him. The word of the Lord. And the response to the responsorial psalm, My lips are filled with your praise, with your glory all the day long. My lips are filled with your grace, with your glory all the day long. Be a rock where I can take refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock, my stronghold, free me from the hand of the wicked. My lips are filled with your praise, with your glory all the day long. It is you, O God, who are my hope, 
my trust, O Lord, since my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth, in my mother's womb you have been my help. I will declare the Lord's mighty deeds, proclaiming your justice, yours alone. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and I proclaim your wonder still. My lips are filled with your praise, with your glory all the day long. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Root of Jesse, set up as a sign to the peoples, come to save us and delay no more. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there lived a priest called Zechariah who belonged to the Abijah section of the priesthood. And he had a wife, Elizabeth by name, who was a descendant of Aaron. Both were worthy in the sight of God and scrupulously observed all the commandments and observances of the Lord. But they were childless. Elizabeth was barren, and they were both getting on in years. Now it was the turn of Zechariah's section to serve, and he was exercising his priestly office before God, when it fell to him by lot, as the ritual custom was, to enter the Lord's sanctuary and burn incense there. And at the hour of incense, the whole congregation was outside praying. Then there appeared to him the angel of the Lord, standing on the right of the altar of incense. The sight disturbed Zechariah, and he was overcome with fear. But the angel said to him, Zechariah, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, is to bear you a son, and you must name him John. He will be your joy and delight, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must drink no wine, no strong drink. Even from his mother's womb, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he will bring back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of fathers towards their children and the disobedient back to the wisdom that the virtuous have, preparing for the Lord a people fit for him. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stand in God's presence, and I have been sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. Listen, since you have not believed my words, which will come true at their appointed time, you will be silenced and have no power of speech until this has happened. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and were surprised that he stayed in the sanctuary so long. When he came out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had received a vision in the sanctuary, but he could only make signs to them and remained dumb. When his time of service came to an end, he returned home. Some time later, his wife Elizabeth conceived and for five months she kept to herself. The Lord has done this for me, she said, now that it has pleased him to take away the humiliation I suffered among men. The Gospel of the Lord. We pray for the needs that we have at this time. We pray especially for all our families, our neighbours, and our friends. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> we pray for all who are sick at this time, especially those suffering from the virus. May the Lord bring them the healing that they long for. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> we pray for all 
our youngest children, our infants especially, take keeping in mind the two readings now that highlighted the birth of a child. And of course, this in turn helps us to look forward to the birth of Jesus himself. Lord, hear us. We take a moment now to include any particular special intentions that we might possibly have this morning. And for all our intentions, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord our God, be with us in all our undertakings this day, and be pleased to grant what we ask in prayer, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we lay upon your altars, that what we bring, despite our weakness, may be sanctified by your power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Brendan our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, <clears throat> O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Just to remind us of our arrangements for coming to communion, communion will only be distributed from the two communion stations here on the sanctuary. All who are coming to communion must come up by the central aisle in single file and return to their seats by the two side aisles. While queuing for communion, please be careful to observe the recommended social distance of two meters or six feet. Having received communion, please return to the same seat you were occupying previously. Communion will be distrib distributed onto the hand only. We will not be giving communion onto the tongue at this time due to the high risk of infection. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, Lamb of God, behold, who take the sins of the world, that are those called the supper of God. Lord, I am not worthy, he should enter under my roof, but only 
hear the word about to leave, please begin to leave from the back rows, and when you are ready to leave, please do not begin to exit the church unless you can respect social distancing recommendations of two metres at all times. And the 
there's a notice about masses for Christmas. There are still some tickets available for the 10.30 p.m. mass on Christmas Eve and for the 7.30 a.m. mass on Christmas Day. So for the evening mass at half 10 on Christmas Eve and the morning mass at half 7 on Christmas Day, some tickets are still available. All our other masses, however, are fully booked. Let us pray. As we give thanks, Almighty God, for these gifts you have bestowed, graciously arouse in us, we pray, the desire for those yet to come, that we may welcome the nativity of our Saviour and honour it with minds made pure, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.